guys uh back with you today uh uh i want to do a video uh for uh if i say this right florida backyard living asked me to do a video a, a detailed video on how to make a knife from a either a lawn lawnmower blade or a file well, I have a, a lawnmower blade that I'm going to attempt to make one. And the only thing I'm going to use is my side grinder, files. And unfortunately, I had to flatten this out in my forge. So there has to be a way that you got to flatten this out with either heating it with a torch or, or you have a forge. If you don't have a forge, and most people don't, which I built this one myself, but uh, a torch will do the same thing if you can get it hot enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the pattern out on this lawnmower blade. And I'll show it to you in a minute. I'll flip the camera in and I'll show it to you. And we'll cut it out with the side grinder. And then we'll do most of our profiling with the grinder. Try to be perimp. I'm trying to use less tools to build this blade because a lot of people don't have the tools that I use. To build to make the knives that I do and I don't have a whole lot of expensive stuff it's just stuff that I that I've acquired over a time uh, which I'm in the process I wanted I want to get a a 2x72 uh, belt grinder which I'm gonna try to build myself with which is an upcoming video that I'm gonna do but I got to get all the stuff to do that with yet and that's gonna be a while down the road but anyways let's get back to the blade that we're doing today and uh I'll switch the camera around and I'll show you the lawnmower blade that I have and then we'll draw the pattern out on the on the on the blade and then we'll uh we'll cut it out with the side grinder. So hang on guys. Back. This is the this is the lawnmower blade that I have. I come off of an old lawnmower that I had here around the house here that I need to get rid of. But uh, anyways, lawnmower this this is high carbon steel. I mean it has to take a a, a pretty beaten to cut grass and stuff up with the rocks and everything you run over so we're going to take this i've straightened it out mostly but we can straighten it out more once we get the blade cut out the knife uh profile that we want on it and cut out and uh we can go from there i want it to be close to nine inches because i want a four inch blade and at least a five inch handle on it that gives you plenty enough room to play with on the handle and it's gonna be a full tang handle and uh with a wooden wooden handle more than likely because it's all i have access right now but anyways we're gonna set the camera up and then i'll show you we'll draw it we'll draw the to the best i can because some, sometimes my drawing's not too good but we'll draw the the the, the plan out We'll cut it out with a side grinder, and then we'll go from there. Hang up, guys. Hang on, guys. I'm going to set the camera up, and then we can go from there. Guys, I'm back. This, my drawing is not too good, so just look over my drawing. But once we get this thing cut out, it's going to look something like this. So we're going to clamp this down in, in, our, uh, in our vise. Cut it out with a side grinder. And then we can start working on the pro on the on the rest of the blade. So here we go, guys.
This is a little rare sometimes. I usually don't wear this apron, but uh, I'm going to get beat up if I don't start wearing it. So, I'm going to cut it out. <laughs> Not the best profile in the world, but it's going to work. Not too bad. I mean, it needs some work done to it, but we'll get there. Uh, let's take the... Uh, the piece that we cut off from all out of the vise and then, then start profiling this piece. Now I have two side grinders. I'm going to use this one with the, the flap wheel on it to start the profiling process. guys I'm trying to keep this blade cool I want to cut out the groove here that we that we first drew on the on the uh, on the knife if you can see that the groove right here so I'm going to take the, the other side grinder and cut that out and then uh, 
get our profile a little better. And the best way to do this is cut lines here because this blade, this cutting blade will not go in a curve. So I'll cut consecutive lines through here and then go into it at the side and, and cut it out. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And we can profile the rest of it out with uh, with our other grinder, which I'm going to change the wheel on this because it's not uh, digging into like I want it to do. So I'm going to put a different wheel on here, just a regular grinding wheel instead of the flap. Instead of this one, I'm going to put a regular grinding wheel on there. Gonna have to buy some more. I'm getting kind of low. Uh, but anyways, this is this is where we're gonna use the regular grinding wheel. This one's got enough on it for me to grind out what I need to grind on there. But anyways, here we go. I believe this handle is a little longer than what we need it, so I'm going to cut some of this handle off uh, and uh, make it make it shorter. A little bit too long. I don't like it handle that long.
you think, guys? Not the best in the world, but it's primitive. But we're using uh, less tools that we need to need to use. We're just trying to do this simple, simple blade. That's all I'm trying to do. So I'll keep at it and then see what we come up with. This is just a round file that I'm using to file out the finger groove that I put in a knife blade. And then we'll grab the, uh, the flat file and do our edges out here. Well, we can do with this one, it doesn't matter. Switch it out and put, the diff put a different one on here. You don't have to do all this switching out. You could use the same grinding wheel. I just want a, a smoother edge on that on that uh, blade. So that's the reason I'm putting the softer uh, grinding wheel on there. This one right here. It's for blending, uh, sanding. So we're gonna just smooth out the metal as much as we can to get it to look like something. I think. What do you think, guys? Uh, I'm gonna do both sides like that, and and the the, the, <coughs> the handle part also. <coughs> <coughs> and then we'll try to put a try to put an edge on this thing, and I'll show you how to do that once we get to do that.
One side down, and one more side to go. Guys, I am dipping this water, this uh, blade in, in water to keep it cool. Because I don't want that metal to get too hot. Because we're gonna, at one point we're going to have to temper it. We're going to have to heat treat this knife. And I'm going to try to do it with a torch to show you that it can be done with a torch. Because all we really need to heat treat is the edge. Once we get our, uh, our profile on our edge on there. But... I think it's turning out pretty decent so far. And all we've used is, used is that side grinder. I cut it out of a lawnmower blade and used the side grinder. So there we go so far. Not a bad looking little knife, I think. Still got some work to do to it, but we'll keep working at it. This may be a long video, but I'm going to try to break it up in increments. So, I'm going to pause the video and then I'll come back to you. Okay guys, uh, what I did is I clamped my side grinder into my vise. Uh, some of you may not have a vise, so you might not be able to do this. But I put a flatter wheel on there and I'm going to use that to profile this blade a little bit better. That way I can uh, almost use it as a as a belt sander, but it's a, it's my grinder. So we're gonna we're gonna go do that and uh, I'll show you.
It almost worked just as good as my belt sander did, or maybe better, I don't know. But anyways, this is where we're at with this. It's not the best looking knife in the world. Will it be functional? I think it will be. I mean, once we get an edge and everything on it, it's gonna... Uh, we can clean a lot more of this up with sandpaper. So we're gonna get and do a lot more work with the sandpaper on it and then uh, we'll go from there. This video might be an hour and a half long. I'm sorry guys, I apologize for that, but I wanted to give a detailed explanation of, of what we're doing here. But I may break it up and, and not throw it all into one video, but video it. And then break the video up and just give you pieces of it right now and then some later on. It's probably what I'll do. But anyways, this is where we're at with it. So we're going to take the, the grinder out. And uh, get out some sandpaper and start sanding. Sorry about the shaking, guys. Uh, my table's a little wobbly. But when you're a poor man, you work with what you got. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll get back with you. All right, I'm not going to show all this sanding process, but you want to sand this blade. We're going to sand the blade down. We'll get back with you in a few minutes. Okay guys, uh, I took the, the side grinder and ground a lot of this down. It all depends on your preference, how you want it to, how smooth you want it, how shiny you want it. I particularly don't like them shiny. I want a little bit of patina on there to make it look, make it look rug, rugged. But you can blacken out this edge right here, and if you can find a, a a drill bit the same gauge as this steel is you can lay it on a flat surface and scribe the line the center line on your blade to get to where you need to, uh, how far you need to come down with your with your edge I'm not gonna do it personally I'm gonna do it by sight that's the way I normally do it but I do want to get a line on here to show you where the edge will come up. So, so we don't go any higher than that. So what I'm going to do is draw a line up this blade to where our edge should be. And that's as high as I want to come up with it. guys can see that. Hopefully you can see it. Camera focuses in. I drew a, the edge up the blade and that's as far as we're going to go up with it. We want to do the same thing on the other side. 
try to stay within that parameters. You can either do this with a file or you can use the side grinder. I'm going to use the side grinder to do it because it's a whole lot easier. If I did it with a file, I'd be here for hours trying to do it, and this video would be five hours long. And I'm not going to do that to you. So I'm going to clamp it in the vise. I'm going to get my side grinder, and I'm going to start grinding on this. I'm going to stop and I'm going to look and see where I'm at on that plate. See how much uh, I've taken off there to keep up with the other side because I don't want to get too far into the other side and have the bevels off. So we're going to keep at it until, we, until I get to that point. Show you what that guys what it should look like. Here, here's what it should look like when you're when you're grinding that. So we got we're a little over not even halfway through the metal. So I'm gonna flip it over to the other side and start grinding on that side some more on the other side over here to get it close to where we're at on that side. Okay? So here we go. Guys, once we get down to a point where we're almost at that edge, I'm going to take and refine that with a file. So we're at that point now to where I can take a small file and, and put it in, put it in the vise, and then work with a file on the rest of it. Because we got it to where we need it, we just need to refine it.
Try to stay within those parameters where we want that edge to be. We don't want to go up on that blade. We just want to keep the, the right angle, the same angle as we did with the, with the, with the side blade. And then this, this is where we can refine our, our plunge, plunge line to get it looking right also. It's almost there. I mean, we can work on it some more with a smaller file if we need to. I have some small, real small files, but if you don't have a small file, just use your, your regular file that you use. So we're gonna get on the other side and then uh, keep working at it. Remember, try to stay within that perimeter that you want that edge to come up on the blade. Up. You don't want to uh, come way up on that blade and make it, up. it won't look right. sandpaper on it to get it to the next point. Gives you guys an idea of what it's going to look like. Not too bad for a handmade knife with nothing else. I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll get back to this. Uh, continue to sand on this boot on this on this edge, getting the best, getting as close as I can get to it, and then we can, uh, if you have a sharpening stone, you can put it on the sharpening stone once you get the edge where you need it, which I do, I have several of them, and I'll show you how to sharpen it. Once we get this done, We have to drill holes back here for our handle to go on, and then we're gonna have to uh, heat treat and heat treat and, and temper this blade.
pretty close. You guys can see that. Camera's not too good. But uh, there we go. When we can refine this more and fix our plunge line because it's a little off. Uh, once we get it uh, drilled out for a handle to go on. So we need to decide where, where we're going to put our pins and how we're going to put our handle on here. I think I want the handle to come Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe right in here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have it come right to the edge of that blade. If you guys can see that, where I marked that. So, we're going to want a pin right here, right here, and back here I want to put a, a hole for a lan lanyard. So let's go ahead and punch these. We'll get our hand drill and drill them out. Punch. Just, just to mark, to mark it to where we need to, where, where we need to drill it at. I uh, can't keep up with stuff. I need to find my hammer. I'll get back with you in just a minute, guys. Now, what I did is I tried to center it up in the in this handle. Put this one down here in the center of this, and then this one back here will be for the lanyard hole. So, we're gonna clamp this up in the vise. Maybe. Stop messing the blade up. Uh, find a drill bit that we need that fits our pin, our brass pin. We want to get close to the same size as this, or maybe a little, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. But hang on, guys. Now I do have a drill press, but for the sake of it, I want to show you that it can be done with a drill. A hand drill. Let's make sure it's tight in the vise. Let's see if we can get started drilling this out. Hopefully it's not real hard. bigger once we get it uh for our lanyard to go in. Very hard. I'll get back with you guys. Okay guys, it took me a while, but I got these holes drilled. Uh, this metal is extremely hard from a lawnmower blade. 
Uh, but here's here's where we're at. Now, here comes the point where we need to heat treat this blade. So I'm going to take the torch and I'm going to heat up the edge and I'm going to dip it in oil. I have uh, linseed oil that I use for my smaller knives. So we're going to heat this up to where a magnet will not stick to the blade and then quench it in the oil. So hang on guys, let me get my oil. Alright, I keep it in, the, in this can, but we're going to get the, uh, the torch, we're going to need something to hold on to this with because it's going to get hot. And let's make sure our magnet's ready, it's just a small magnet you can use. Here we are. Hey guys, uh, back. Sorry about that. I had to stop for a minute. Um, I couldn't get this hot enough with the torch. So I'm going to put it in my forge. But my suggestion is if, if you're, you can build a fire and the coals get hot enough, you can dip this thing in there and, and uh, heat it up that way. With the torch, I just couldn't get it hot enough for some reason, but uh, I'm going to heat my forge up and I'm going to put it in the forge and get it hot. So you guys can bear with me on that one. Alright guys, I got a heat treated. Uh, I actually used the forge to do it. But like I said earlier, if you're outside somewhere, build your fire, man. Let the embers get hot in there. 
any kind of fire would work. I mean, if you're burning brush in your backyard or whatever, I mean, just build a fire. Let the embers get hot. Put that blade in there. Let it get to where a magnet will not touch it. Because your fire is going to get that hot. Trust me, I've had fires that hot. And you can uh, quench it then. It doesn't take much oil. You've seen what I had. It's just a little, that was a tea can full of linseed oil. You don't have to use linseed oil. You can use motor oil, old motor oil. Just do it outside where you won't be able to breathe the, the, the fumes coming off from it. You could use vegetable oil, corn oil, any kind of oil. So we're going to let this cool down, and then we're going to uh, come up with a handle for it. So I'll get back with you guys. Hey guys, uh, I'm back. I wasn't happy with the, the hardness on that blade, so I re-hardened re it again. Uh, it's a lot better than what it was. Before the file was uh, grabbing, it wouldn't skate across. It's, it's still catching some, but I think it's this lawnmower blade, man. It, it just won't get, it was already hard to start off with, and uh, even harder now. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna try it again. We'll leave it where it is. And once we get it cleaned all up, we can we can temper the blade and go from there. That's where we're at with it. We've got a handle. We got to make a handle for it. I haven't decided what I'm, what kind of handle I'm gonna put on it yet. It's gonna be wood because it's all I have. But uh, I haven't decided what type of wood yet. So let's cool down and we'll get back to you. Alright guys, it's cooled down now. We're going to start sanding this. I'm going to start with the 80 grit. I haven't clamped to a two before. So just hand sand this. sanding so get your arms ready to sand like I said in it before it doesn't have to be perfect this is handmade I expect some flaws in it I don't expect it to be look like it's like it's bought out of a store Best thing to do is if you have a block of wood, wrap it around that block of wood so you can just sit there and grind. Sand it down. See what it looks like and that's with the 80 grit I'm not gonna go too much more than that because I want that rugged look on there I want the patina look on this blade so we're gonna sand it with 80 and then I'll get back with you all right guys sanded a lot of it down uh, got all the 
the uh, Ford's grime off from it, I should say, uh, from the oil, from the from the quench. Doesn't have an edge on it yet, but we will get one on there. Uh, but uh, there we go. Simple knife. Just about a little bit of hard work with primitive tools. Sandpaper. Uh, most of it's been done with a uh, with a side grinder and a file. So let's figure out what kind of handle we're going to put on this, and I'll get back with you. All right, guys. I got some. Uh, Hardwood here I got. I don't know what kind of wood this is. I, I, I still can't figure it out. But this wood is extremely hard and I've used it for handles before. So we're going to cut these out and we're going to use this for handles for this knife. So uh, let's clamp these down and get them cut out. And then I'll get back with you. Hi right, guys, we got one side of it drilled. And uh, so what we're going to do from here is take this piece that we've drilled and attach it to this piece and drill the identical holes so it'll line up when we go to put it on our when we go to put it on our uh, on our handle on the tang. So let's clamp these two together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it on a drill press. You don't have to do it. If you don't have a drill press, you can just do it hand, hand drill. But I'm gonna do it in my drill press because it's just a lot easier for me to do it that way. Uh, but you get the concept of what needs to be done. I drill one side by clamping it to the, to the blade itself on the tang. So the holes will line up, and then the other side we're going to do to we're going to clamp it to the to the wood itself. And drill it that way. So it's gonna be it's gonna be clamped on here like this. And then we'll drill it through. So I'll get back with you when we get that done. All right, guys, I'm back. We got the hose drilled. Now, this brass rod you can buy at any hardware store, tractor supply, true value. Anywhere you want to go, you can buy these brass rods. I particularly get mine at, at uh, tractor supply, but that's where I, it's closer to my house. But anyways, I got those drilled out. Now, what we want to do is we want to cut the pins so they fit all the way through and some hanging out. And attach them to the blade before we glue it to make sure that they will go in there pretty easy because once we get ready to glue this, we got five minute epoxy. It's got to be done within five minutes or this stuff will start setting up. So, with that being said, I'm going to clean up a little bit on this desk so I have some room to do it, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, I cut the pins. They're all about this size, and they're maybe a little bit bigger than what, what I need, but I'd rather have more than enough than not enough. I cleaned up the edges on these, on the grinder. Just went and ground the edges and put like a bevel on it, uh, like a taper on it, so to go through there the wood and the metal correctly. Now, we're not ready to put this handle on here yet. This blade has not been tempered. So we need to temper this blade. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Something's going on with my phone here. I apologize. Uh, it keeps telling me my memory's full. Which I know it's not. I just deleted half the stuff on there. Anyways, to get back to this, heat the temper. What I do 
is I clamp the blade in the in the file. In it, I'm so sorry. In the in the I clamp the blade. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I clamp the, I clamp the the blade in the vise, and I'm gonna heat across the top of this blade right in here until it turns blue, and then that will travel down into the, the actual edge, which will temper this blade. So here we go. To be careful out of their tips, so don't get it too hot. Stay more back this way. Actually, I'm going to fix that. Hold on one second. I don't want that, I don't want that tip getting too hot. I'm going to make it brittle. Turn blue. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Hope you can. Hey guys, we're back now. The temper. I'm going to show you the blade in a few minutes when I pull it out of the vise. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out there and I'll show it to you. See how the blade turns? I really didn't want it to go down in that edge like that, but that's, uh, I can't, I hated it too much. That's my fault. Let's hope we didn't temper it too much. We'll have to deal with it. Alright guys, I'm going to let this cool down and I'll get back with you. Alright guys, we can, uh, I'm back after I cooled it down. Actually, I dipped it in water. I shouldn't have done that, but I did. Let's hope it didn't mess with the temper on the blade uh, and made it brittle. But, uh, you can either clean this up now, or you can clean it up after you put the handle on it. I usually clean them up after I put the handle on there because I got to do a lot of grinding once I get this handle on there. So I'm going to put the handle on. We're going to dry fit it first. And then we're going to use the glue. So we're going to dry fit it. What I mean by dry fitting 
is we're going to attach this handle to this blade without putting any glue on it at all whatsoever to make sure that everything fits together perfectly and make sure that everything is going to go smooth before we glue it because I don't want to be in the process of gluing it and then things won't fit like I said once you start with the five minute epoxy you got five minutes <laughs> so makes things kind of difficult when you're in the middle of gluing something it won't put it won't go together right bottom one's on as you can see it's on there and then we're gonna try to fit the top one on to make sure we get it on there right to where it's supposed to be see how tight that is a fit that's why I wanted to do it dry and then we can go back and loosen these holes up a little bit. When we go to glue it. See what I mean? It's fitting tight. And it's going to be hard to do anything with that. When you're trying to put, uh, when you're trying to glue it together and with the five minute epoxy and you got five minutes to do it. That's why I always like to do a dry run. And I want to always make sure that everything doesn't have no gaps. If we get it all tightened up, make sure the, the fronts are even, which these are not. So that's why you want to do a dry fit to make sure everything is where you need it at before you glue it. So we're going to take it back apart. Uh, make any adjustments that we need to make to it and then go from there. So hang with us, guys. All right, guys, I think we're ready to uh, epoxy this handle on, on here. I think we're in good shape now. I got it to where I need it. Uh, it's a little off in some areas, but we can, we can cure that with a grinder. So I'm going to get the epoxy ready, and uh, we'll glue this thing together. Hold on one second. Now, the key to this is... To have all your stuff ready when you're gluing. I use two little small C clamps to clamp everything together once I get it on there. Uh, epoxy, you got five minutes. It's five minute epoxy. Now you can buy 24 hour epoxy, but I like the five minute epoxy. That way I can get it can dry and I can get started grinding on the handle and then get it to where I need it. Uh, within 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And you want to let it set a, a little bit because you don't want to grind it to where the epoxy gets loose and then it comes out of there. So we got uh, our epoxy ready. Let's get something to mix it on with. And we'll get started uh, putting this thing together. Hang on, guys. Here we go, guys. We're going to start gluing. Uh, best to wear gloves because you're going to get this stuff all over you. I have not worn gloves before and I had it all over my hands. So, get your pair of gloves. 
vinyl, plastic, gloves, or whatever, it don't make no difference. As long as you got gloves on to uh, keep from getting the epoxy all over you. One side glued, the other side getting ready to be glued. Let's make sure we get it on there right. This is what I was talking about, guys. To have everything prepared. Now, one of my pens is not fitting in there, right? So, I don't know what's going on with it. We're going to have to deal with it. Exactly what I didn't want to happen. Broke it. So now we're going to have to redo it and, and take all this apart. Hey right, guys, we're going to try. We're going to attempt to glue this thing. Uh, had some problems with it a few minutes ago, and then it couldn't get it. The handle that I, I that I was going to put on it broke, so I had to I had to make a new handle. I had to cut new wood, so just bear with me, and hopefully we can get this thing glued together. I'm only going to put two, two pins in it for right now because I'm having problems with that middle pin. I don't know what's going on with it, but we'll get that straight once we get, uh, once we get it glued together. So you guys just bear with me. I don't know what's going on with that third pin, but we're going to get it one way or another. And you do want to clamp this together tight. 
Make sure everything seals up the way it needs to be. attempt to get this third pan in there. I don't know, it was giving me fits a few minutes ago. I didn't want to go in there at all on a, on a dry run. It still doesn't want to go in there. I'm going to run a drill bit through it and see what happens. be all it took. It's been stubborn. Yep, there we go. She's in there, guys. I do want to get another clamp on here because it doesn't seem like it's going to... Uh... Getting tight enough in that middle. All right, now we're going to let this dry 15, 20 minutes at the most, and then we can start shaping our handle. So I'll get back with you. Guys, uh, we're going to give this, uh, sorry about that, I need to tilt the camera. Uh, it's been drying for about five minutes now. We're going to give it a little bit longer, but this is what it looks like. Uh, once we get it, uh, once it dries, we can start shaping the handle and cleaning up the blade and everything. Now, I am going to have to use my belt grinder to shape this handle. It's just too hard to do with a side. You can do it with a side grinder, but I'm going the easy way out. I'm sorry, God. I'm wrap this knife, take the clamps off. And start working on this handle. I think the glue's had long enough to set. Uh, first of all, what we want to do is we want to cut, trim back the uh, the pins. And we'll do that with the side grinder. We'll trim those back, and then we'll start uh, shaping this handle. trim back and I'll get back with you in a few minutes on shaping the handle sorry guys uh, I didn't get back with you but uh, to shape the handle you're going to do a lot of sanding so I'm doing a lot of hand sanding right now I did some sanding on my belt sander to get it, the bulk of it off but now it's all from here on it's all it's all hand sanding to get it to handle to where we need it. It takes a while. It's a, it's a process of it. You want it to you want it to look good. I mean, you don't want it looking like a 
rough or anything like that. You want to you want to make sure your handles are shaped the way you want them shaped. And it is it is time consuming. But once you get to, once you get it done, the finished product is is worth worth it. So I'll take it out and I'll show it to you. As you guys see that, I hope you can see that. And once we get it all, all uh, sanded down to where we need it, we'll take and clean up. We'll get all the excess glue off from it and and uh, alcohol it down, clean the blade up. Make it look good. More sanding. Yeah, it looks pretty good for a little cutter. Uh, let's go ahead and clean the blade up, and I'll get back with you. Hey guys, I'm back. A knife in a day. It's uh, doesn't look bad. I don't think. I'm not too particular about this handle because it's soft wood, but uh. I gotta do a little bit more shaping to it. It's kind of like an on an angle, but we'll get that straight. Uh, so, what do you guys think so far? Easy, easy made knife. I didn't use a whole lot of tools doing this, so I'll get back with you in just a minute. Hey guys, uh, we're about done with this thing. Uh, like I said, the handle. You're just gonna keep grinding. <coughs> you're gonna hand sand that until your preference of the way it feels this is it I'm done with this thing I'm, uh, this is about as good as it's going to get it's not that bad of a knife it's pretty decent not too happy with the handle but it is what it is now I can't do nothing about it uh, different type of edge that I put on there this time not for sure what kind of edge they call that, but I've seen it on some uh, bushcraft knives. It's almost like a Scandinavian gray, uh, grind, but I don't know if I got it exactly right, but it's close. But this is where we're at with this. I'm going to put a clear lacquer on this handle. Maybe, maybe, maybe just rub it down with linseed oil. I don't know yet. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me try to get detailed as I could on this. And uh, this is from a lawnmower blade that uh, Florida Backyard Living wanted me to make this video to show him uh, step by step on how to do this. I hope this was helpful to you and I hope uh, it helps somebody else out there that that's uh, wanting to make a knife that they can use and don't have a whole lot of tools to do it with because we didn't use a whole lot of tools I used I did use my belt sander some on this but you can do it with a you can do it with a side grinder if, if you if you're patient sometimes I don't have patience to, to go through all that but uh that's it right there, guys. I'm done for today. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope God blesses you in everything that you do. And I just thank the Lord for this blessed day. I thank Him for all that He does for me. So I hope you guys have a blessed evening. And I hope you have a... Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't liked and subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the like button down there and subscribe. Thanks, guys, for watching. Have a nice day.